Today I'm talking to Scott of Flavorful Farms. He has been professionally farming for three years and as a new farmer Ian and I are here to pick his brain and get all the hot tips we can. We found he had so much helpful advice and we feel that a lot of these hot tips would be valuable for other people thinking about farming. So join us as we learn lots and make sure to stick around because I think you'll be really shocked at what we talk about on tip 20. It's something a lot of people don't talk about but it's it's a good one to consider. Hot tips. Hot tips. How do I add more money without trying to add so much extra work? Yeah, because that's like one thing that yeah. I'm concerned about with the oh. idea of starting the farm. There's only so many hours in the day. Yes. So yes. how <laughs> how do you most of efficiently yeah. use those you try to sell you need to try to sell the things that you can make the most the most units of the things that you can make the most money on right yeah so that would be things like leafy green vegetables because you can because like one bed in one season will have between three and five crops in it where if I grew corn in this I could get one crop <laughs> right if I grew potatoes in there I could get one crop so that so that um, that if you think of that bed as a unit if I can grow 50 pounds of greens um, per, like cr every time I crop it out, right? I would get, and I got like, a, even if I got like seven pounds um, or seven dollars a pound, that would be 350 bucks. Yeah. A bed. Yeah, and, and then, and then I get, the so, logic I get is three to five crops in that bed. Yeah. Right? So that bed then would be like a thousand dollar bed. Yeah. Whereas if I have four dollar corn or whatever it is, then that bed's only going to be worth however much I got off of that. Yeah, and even though you are doing the multiple rotations, you're still cultivating just the set amount of space. Yes. So even if you had the corn, that's going to get you almost nothing. Right. You would still have to be maintaining it. Right. Yeah, absolutely. Like, yeah. So the so there is efficiencies in, in staying small. Yes. And like so right now I have everything here and everything like my washing station's right here, my tools are right here, um, my office is right here, the bathrooms are right here, right? Everything's right here. So if I started adding lower value crops, I would have to start adding further and further out into the backfield. And then that's like, now I gotta take my tools farther. Now I gotta do everything further. Like everything's just more trips, more everything, right? You forget yeah. something out there, all of a sudden the phone rings, you gotta go back inside, right? You're chasing the dog around, you're, right? <laughs> Light. Hot tips. Hot tips. What are the expectations that the grocery stores have of you? Um, they're, I would say I'm pretty lucky. They're extremely understanding. Yeah, so yeah. they're giving you some room to grow. Oh yeah, for sure. But I try to show up with what I say I'm gonna show up with yeah. every time. And when I, I then mean, I'm really good to, I think one of the things I do the best is like, if I know something's gonna get messed up, yeah. I tell them yeah. when I know. Not like if my order just spring it on oh, yeah. the last second. <laughs> oh yeah, totally. Yeah, yeah, no, I try to give them like adequate time. Like I've already, like I can tell just from, just cause I've like been in it for a little bit now. Yeah. I can tell that um, I'm probably gonna run out of stuff in like the next two or three weeks. Yeah. And so I've been starting to tell all my guys that, hey, like I think my season's gonna be over in the next two or three weeks. Yeah. So, so they're, they're so they know, they know. Yeah, oh, yeah. There'll be no surprises. No. Hot tips, hot tips. One of the toughest things is going to be to find customers and then yes. to know how much we can grow. Yes. And, you know, it's like if you grow too much, you're wasting time, effort, yeah. and money. And if you don't grow enough, then, you know, you're not meeting the demand, which I guess is what you would more so hope for to totally. see that room to grow. Yeah. But, um, like, yeah, it it's going to be kind of like you need like a trial run year almost just to. Definitely. Oh, yeah, for sure. 100%. That's a, that's a really good way to think about it. Um, I think that um, I thought that before that it would have been better to grow less and not have that waste of time and labor. But yeah. For the past two seasons, I've not had enough stuff. Yeah. And I've left money on the table. Yeah. And I'm just like, oh man, like an extra five thousand dollars would be like really nice though. <laughs> yeah, too, totally. Right? Yeah. So um, I think I would be. I think I'll be a bit more aggressive with like my plantings like that. Yeah. From now on, I think I'll grow because like, so, so for the past like two years, I've had um, I've had stuff coming out and then. I pick up new customers, yeah. right? Find new places to sell at, just because like my reputation gets out there. But then, the customers that I already have also want more stuff. Yeah. So then everybody wants more demand. Mm -hmm. So then I've the both things happen in the same uh, last two years where 
it's like got to the, be the middle of summer and all of a sudden I don't have enough stuff so I'm trying to like plant out more stuff. Yeah. But I'm not planting out enough stuff. Yeah. Right? To like to meet the increased demand. Yeah. So that's kind of what happened with me this year. Like I'm still I'm supplying all the stores that I um, started with it at the beginning of the year, but I had to drop a couple of my newer guys for the for the last couple of weeks because yeah. just got to, You just ran out. There's just yeah, yeah. Totally. that's just not enough stuff. <laughs> so that's good. Hot tips. Hot tips. The one thing that I did really well, and I think it's a really good idea, is like I think that you should have the size of the farm where um, you can keep it weed free. Yeah, and that's going to be one of the challenges for us because yeah. um, you know we're not. That's not one of our strong points. Yeah. So it's one of the areas we have to totally. really learn. Yeah. And so we're going to use a lot of tarps. It's a good idea. And yeah. I think the good. I think the, the the good idea is to focus on having one part first. Yeah. And get that a hundred percent. And then start adding stuff on to that hundred percent. Yeah. Right. So like, I kept. I started keeping like this block weed free. Yeah. And then I'll add that bottom part. And then now I worry about like adding that part on there. Yeah. Right. Um, I think that's a really good idea. Otherwise, it's just going to be way too much. It's really easy to not want to do anything. <laughs> it's just like, oh, I'm tired. Yeah. That's oh, totally. Too. Weeding. Weeding sucks. Yeah. Hot tips. Hot tips. I think the most critical piece of infrastructure is a walk-in cooler. Yeah. Yeah, hundred percent. That's gonna let you. That's gonna let you harvest at different times, and not have to worry about yeah, stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Don't have to get up at three in the morning. Don't have to get up before the day of oh, your yeah. market. Oh <laughs> yeah. Totally. And um, and it also keeps your product better for longer. So when I harvest, I harvest and it goes either straight into the cooler or I wash it right away. So it's getting into the cold plunge, so it's getting all the field heat off of it. Okay. But you gotta get that field heat off of it. And that's what makes your stuff keep a long time. Yeah. So like that, I, like if you're gonna spend money on anything first, like that's your first thing that you're, you should be penciling out is for that walk-in cooler. And you probably are gonna need to plan to have a little bit bigger of a walk-in cooler than you think you need. Yeah. 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 And Cause it's hard to build. It's hard to build. One. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, um, yeah, you, that's a that's like that's a really good place to spend money, and that's I think that's a really critical piece. Everything else after that is kind of like, it's important, but um, yeah, that's a that's I think if I was going to spend money, like that's where I would tell people to spend money right away. Is yeah. that walk-in cooler? You need to have a walk-in cooler. It makes everything so much easier, and it makes your product better. It's like straight across the board. It's like yeah, it's what you need. For yeah. Sure. Hot tips. Hot tips. We're coming to it from like vegetable gardening. Yeah, yeah. So one thing that we feel is going to be a really big learning curve for us is the difference between what you will eat yourself yes and what is a product that you can bring to market totally well, and and that like needing to have it like perfect like no bugs and stuff yeah people are pretty um forgiving yeah yeah oh yeah okay. yeah for sure um, so like you know like i'm seeing like a oh yeah that's like a nut. leaf like this oh yeah no that's nothing i've i've i sell arugula with like flea beetle holes in it before okay and the stores are like we don't really care. Like if it's green yeah. and stuff. The, the... As long as there's no flea beetles. Yeah, yeah exactly. On it. Yeah, totally. Okay. So like, no, people are like, people are very, very forgiving of, on stuff like that. Like you don't have to worry about that at all. He's a little stegosaurus. He loves, he loves greens. That's funny. <laughs> Hot tips. Hot tips. So just because you can make more gross doesn't mean you're necessarily going to make more net. Yeah. Yeah. So you got to be really careful of that because like right now, I'm basically not set up at all to go to like a farmer's market. Mm -hmm. I don't have enough, um, I don't have enough variety in my crop selection, right? I don't really have a tent or anything. So like, so like they were, these people were trying to get me, uh, everybody always tries to get you to come to the farmer's markets, but like <laughs> different people were trying to get me to come to farmer's markets. And like, I just had to politely say like, no, this isn't like, that's not really my thing. Like, I don't think I'm going to make any money there. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And so it's like, yeah, it's like big costing, especially when you're working by yourself because you can't send someone else. And so like, even if I was going to go to a, um, like the next town over and do a farmer's market, just to go, it's 20 minutes there, 20 minutes back, and you got to be early, right? And you yeah. got to pack up late. So that's, um, that's already realistically one hour gone. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's 20 bucks. I need to, like if you're paying yourself 20 bucks an hour, let's say, that's 20 bucks. Yeah. Right? Plus I got to do all the harvest, all the prep, and everything else so it's like it just keeps going plus you got to be there for the three hours yeah right so like we're already at like four or five or it, right? it becomes a full day it just oh yeah. yeah oh yeah on top of what you're already doing and then like and then like you also got to think too a little bit about like what kind of quality of life you're gonna have and not try to um 
and I'll try to go back on that because like like every every Thursday here we have like a baby night where like all the friends and family or like just there's friends but they all come over with like their little kids right everybody's yeah. like our age right so they all everybody has like kids yeah. like this, right <laughs> so they all come over come over for dinner and so it's like okay well if that's on Thursday and the farmers market's on Thursday then I've got to have all these other costs plus yeah I gotta miss the family stuff hot tips hot tips you need to get really clear on what you want your farm to be for yeah. your for you guys for your life like are you trying to make an extra ten thousand dollars a year or are you trying to like show your kids something or are you like do you want all of these things like are you trying to go full-time eventually because all those things will make what choices you make now different right like if you want to have a homestead and just grow extra stuff right and then just make it like an extra five thousand dollars off growing your extra stuff you can do that that's yeah. fine right but if you want to make like twenty thousand dollars extra on top of your like i'm assuming your work for time uh i do forestry so i okay work seasonally yeah, yeah so so if you wanted to like make an extra what whatever twenty thousand dollars plus your um your salary right yeah then um that's gonna look a lot different than just selling the extra vegetables off your homestead yeah, yeah. hot tips hot tips no i think it's a really good idea to have your commercial stuff and your private stuff separate yeah. yeah right like i don't like you can't see now but we had a personal garden over there and there's more personal gardens by the house we grew squash potatoes corn onions but there's nothing like that out here yeah that stuff yeah. doesn't make me money this is my farm like this is my commercial farm right yeah. it's a lot different than yeah. like for fun hot tips hot tips so say you were running at 50% profit, but let's say you want to make $10,000. So you want to do $20,000 yeah. in sales. So that's pretty easy. We can reverse engineer that backwards. Yeah. That's how I would, that's how I would start to plan my farm. Okay. I would start with that. So I would try to figure out how, like you remember how before I was saying like a pound a foot, yeah. right? $7 a pound. Yep. So now you know how much bed space you're going to need. Okay. To do the 20,000. To do the 20,000. Yeah. Yep. Right. So now you can work backwards and you can say, okay, well, we have a 20 week season, right? So we're gonna need to have one bed come out every single week. Yeah. Right, and then you figure out like that. And I think that's a good way to do it. That's kind of how I've done it. Hot tips, hot tips. The one thing, I don't know how like deep you guys are into it yet, but um, <laughs> but the one thing that, like, that shocked me the most about like doing all this stuff is how food illiterate people are. <laughs> like I was like, oh yeah, people people don't know where their food comes from. But then all of a sudden it'll be like January, and someone's like, do you know where I can get corn? And I'm like, no, <laughs> no, I don't. <laughs> like I thought you were a smart guy. Hot tips, hot tips. So this is one of the things that we're gonna have to invest in right away, right? Yeah, this is the this is a critical piece of infrastructure. This yeah. is the most important thing on your farm. Okay, for sure. Especially if you want to, like, with the kids and stuff, you're gonna want to have flexibility in your time. Yeah right totally so it's t yeah it's like it's the most important thing like this stuff like when do you think i harvested that uh i mean it looks perfect really so yesterday no like last week <laughs> that's last amazing week. right yeah and that's because i have a cooler mm -hmm. right if you didn't have the cooler you'd be screwed totally that would just be all disgusting so yeah super important it's like yeah, I can't, I can't under, I can't um, overstress that enough. How, yeah. how critical a piece of infrastructure this is. Like, this is gonna save you from, this is gonna save you from just a lot of problems. Hot tips, hot tips. Washing is a better um, idea right away if you can do it, if you have the time for it, because sometimes, like if I had that whole big tote of red Russian kale there, um, the center of that would actually still be warm, like the next morning. Yes, yeah. because there's it's it's a, it's really amazing how much field heat stays on that stuff if you keep it on there. Hot tips, hot tips. How much of the time do you think you spend prepping to how much time you spend in the field? Um, um about half your time is going to be post harvesting. Okay. Yeah, you're going to be washing vegetables. And cleaning up. <laughs> it's all like, yeah. That's like, everybody's like, that's like, oh, cool, you got a farm. And it's like, no, I wash vegetables and then I clean up the mess that I made after I washed all the vegetables. You're like, like, I'm basically yeah. a dishwasher. Yeah, and I put labels. Like, I just go label, 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 label. So, um, no, like half. 
So this is a, this is another good spot to to make sure it's efficient. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Hot tips. Hot tips. Everything's very close, like very few steps between stuff. Yeah, you want to make sure you want. Yeah. To, yeah, you want to try to minimize that, especially, especially once you get your like. So, out in the field, say you're on the field, that's fine. But once you're back, yeah, you want to be, don't want to be messing around too much. Yeah. You yeah. want to be messing around as little possible because like, it gets just it gets really like um, like after you've already packed like 300 bags and then you have like another 100 bags to go, you're just like you don't want to do it. And so if it's like hard, you're probably gonna do, you're probably gonna mess something up. And then that's when you gotta return bags and stuff. It feels like even if you can't get out in the field as yeah. efficient as possible, yeah. there's no excuse not to have this yeah. as efficient as possible. Totally. Especially because you, like you're building this. Yeah, and it's 50, just for fifty percent of your time. Yeah. Like it's oh yeah, you're gonna be washing vegetables a lot. So because I don't I don't like washing vegetables yeah. <laughs> as, a, as a vegetable garden. I just yeah. eat it with dirt on it. I know me too. I'm just like, <laughs> yeah, not yeah, picky. Yeah, no, you need to make you need to get those things as clean as you can. Hot tips. Hot tips. Best place to spend money on is um, walking cooler 100 percent and then getting this post harvesting efficient is really important, too. Um, that's another thing we have to build. <laughs> yeah, it's some well, it's it's something though that you can work up. Yeah, especially to like so. This is like this was not my first iteration of this either. Like at first I had so at first I built this thing and then I had everything actually completely backwards, and then I washed like I washed for like two or three weeks, and then I was like, "This is dumb." I was like going over here and then <laughs> doing this, and then I was just like, "Wait, you're I'm, getting dizzy." Well, and yeah. then you knew that something was wrong. I don't know what happened, but I came out here. I came out here one day, and I was like walking through here, and I was just looking around, and I'm like. I got this whole thing backwards. I was like, I should just move everything around. And then I did, and I was like, oh, this is way better. So, uh, good tip: build everything on wheels. So when you put it in the oh, wrong yeah. spot, oh, you yeah. can move it to the oh, right yeah. spot. Yeah, if you could have, if you could, if you could have, if you could have everything on wheels on like a concrete floor, that would be the best because then everything could roll, right? But like, obviously. That's just you know that's more money, more upgrades. Yeah. We just we just poured a concrete floor. Nice. But it's gonna be a garage. Yeah. yeah. So we don't necessarily want to be totally. washing yeah, yeah. in it because we don't want well that's what spraying I, everywhere. That's what like like so last year I was washing inside that shop, um, but it doesn't have a drain either. So that's what I was like really concerned about. I was just like there's gonna be that one time where something happens right and then all of a sudden i got like all this water in the shop that i can't yeah. clean up like it's yeah. gonna be a disaster so yeah so i got out here and now it's like much it's a better solution hot tips hot tips i think it's a really good idea to to decide before how much money you're going to spend um because it's really easy just to keep us spending money in a business there's always something well there's so many five <laughs> there's always there's always something more to buy i can always like i could I could think of like five things right off the top of my head right now to buy. Right? I could buy greenhouse, nursery space, paper pot transplanter, right? Uh, I need pots for the paper pot transplanter. I could do, like it just, it just never ends. So I think it's a good idea to, to pick how much money you're gonna spend before the season starts. Yeah, I, I feel like that's especially good advice to us because at a certain point it's a hobby farm. Yes. And so then you don't necessarily have to think as closely totally. about what you're spending your money yeah. on. And if you have kind of that number to work with, then yeah. you really need to justify spending outside of that budget totally. for personal. It's like, yeah. would I have bought this for yeah. personal if I didn't have the excuse of the business? Totally. Hot tips. Hot tips. Um, I think that if you guys really just wanted to make like that, that like net 10,000 say, um, yeah, it's like the more money that you want to put into it, the more efficient you can make your time getting that. Money. getting to there yeah especially yeah. if you thought like especially if you thought like for the first little bit you're gonna spend like whatever first year you spend ten thousand to make ten thousand yeah but then the next year you just put like two thousand bucks in every year or whatever after that right that's why i kind of said that it'd be nice if like to go for that twenty thousand dollars and then net ten thousand because then you can you can take that reinvest 10, it. yeah 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 because yeah. yeah. that's just gonna like so even if you didn't even if you didn't um even if you weren't trying to make more money necessarily you can take that and use it though to spend less time. Yeah, doing it. to work less. Oh yeah, yeah, which is like awesome. Like next year, <laughs> if I got a paper pot transplanter, um, if I had a paper pot transplanter and didn't do YouTube, 
Um, <laughs> I wouldn't, like, my farm would be, like, super easy, totally easy to manage, right? But when I go there and I got the camera, it tastes like... Oh, but three, come, on. Like, come on! Let's be honest. Uh, is the paper pot transplanter really going to do that, or is it just the YouTube? Uh, it could be, it could be. Hot tips. Hot tips. It's kind of deceptive to look at my farm because you're like, okay, well, he's got 40 beds or whatever's out there, but it's actually like I have 120 beds, right? Yeah, like because people, you planted yes, multiple Yes, people plants. ask me how big my farm is, and I'm like, it's under a quarter acre, but that's, it's, that's not really, that's not what's happening. It's not like that thing's happening once. It's like it's happening three or four times, right? Yeah. So that's another thing to think about is like that if you have a small system, your timing is going to be really tight. Mm -hmm. Right. So next year, if I kept the exact same size, uh, uh, the exact same number of beds that I had, um, I could try to flip my beds a lot faster. To right? get more. Yes. Yeah. So season extension stuff like the poly load tunnels, having them on there is going to expedite my crops. So it's going to make things grow faster. Um, a lot of times, all like there's a couple of, like lettuces and stuff that are going to seed now. If it was earlier in the season, I might have just left them in there and waited till I needed to have a bed to plant out like pull them out and then yeah. put them back in but but if i was going to try to stack everything really tight those would be coming out and some would be coming in like as soon as i harvested that same day hopefully they'd be going in. yeah right so then i would be able to get more out of my farm in that sense too yeah. so yeah that's mostly why so working the land that you have yes more intensively yeah. instead of expanding your land totally and then yeah. you save in the efficiencies of not needing to do all the other things that go yes. along with the land. Yeah, for you guys, like for you guys, what I was kind of thinking was like, if you had like a really bumping green spot and then you had like, so that would be like your high profit area. Yeah, which would be the closest yeah, yeah, yeah. to the- totally. And then you had like your lower profit stuff. The one thing about you guys is kind of neat because like you could um, like eat the, low value crops if they didn't right yeah cool so you could have like a bigger diversity in crops and not have to like worry about it so much because it's like yeah that's one thing i've thought about with the farmer's market because totally. you want to bring more than you're going to sell yes. and you want and, the diversity of crops too. and then when mm -hmm. we bring it whatever's left isn't a waste because it becomes our vegetables yes, for the week exactly. that we eat at home exactly yeah and then um and then too if you set it up kind of like that then when it's the middle of the season and the kids are sick and ian has to go to work right then you know what you're going to drop you're not going to focus on that so yeah. you're just going to focus on getting those greens first hot tips hot tips so, uh, i feel like we have a little bit of knowledge because we've been growing for so long yeah, yeah. like yeah, i've been Serena's growing for 15 gardener. years yeah. like having a garden and so i have techniques for doing things more efficiently totally. but that's a home garden it's completely different when you're yeah. talking about like, yeah to market we, we've been saying we're like experienced gardeners going into being novice farmers yeah yeah, yeah. and you know there's a lot of difference right there's yeah but that's it's good that you're recognizing that there is a difference because hot tips hot tips we are in a comfortable place for farming totally. because we're in a comfortable place financially yeah, yeah so we can put time and energy into farming yeah because we don't have to put yeah, the yeah. time and the energy into the yeah like but into the financial aspect that's how i that's how i feel though for myself though too right now is that i don't have to have like i don't have to have a farm that makes fifty thousand dollars yeah if i don't want to well, and, and you already have the infrastructure, right? right? Like you exactly. have the equipment, yeah. you have yeah. like the hard labor of establishing everything. Farm. Yeah, everything's my whole farm is like is debt free. It makes money. It's cash flow positive. So if something happened where I couldn't sell for two years and I had to start off again, I would be okay. Yeah. And that yeah. makes like such a difference. I'm not chasing after having to um, make a loan payment. Yeah. yeah. Right. Which is like such a big thing. I see like other people. I just yeah. I see other people having to chase like having to make seven hundred fifty dollars every week. I'm just like, oh man, that sucks. That's when you have to start doing that farmers market yeah. and that other one and like and the CSA. Well, and then you burn like, yourself out. Oh like, yeah. yeah. It's just a lot of stress. Like the first couple of years when I was doing it, and I I had my house, and it was just like I was just stressed very thin because I was trying to put money into my business, and. Like I still had like a all the bills. Oh yeah, mortgage, and then all the operations, all the cost of like running a house on top of that, and it's just like, yeah, it was just a lot. It was just very. I found I found that I found that time like I can work a lot, 
I can work hard, like I can do like my YouTube every day and like and have another job and stuff. But as soon as I get that financial pressure in there, I fall to pieces. Like I'm just, I just, I hate it so much. Yeah, yeah. it's it's definitely a heavy burden. Oh yeah. Hot tips. Hot tips. You go into it with a plan, and then once you start doing that, everything's going to change because you're going to get different opportunities and stuff. Yeah. And I think you need to chase the best opportunities, whatever that looks like. So if like you could make a lot of money selling seedlings and like after you're going to do like five thousand dollars at farmers market or five thousand dollars in in crops at the farmers market, like yeah, that'd be great. Yeah, like, <laughs> yeah, that'd be awesome, right? Because then you could you'd probably be getting some money to come back to you after the end of that. So cool. Thanks so much for like having us out here and yeah. showing us around. Thanks for coming. Yeah, uh, super awesome what you got going on here. And for us, we felt like there was a lot of a uh, lot to learn because uh, you know you're the one man show yep. and it's just going to be the two of us. And then uh, you're three and a half years into it, so you're kind of finding your feet with it. And yeah. you know, it's good to see that to kind of give us some sort of vision as to what to cool. point towards. So. Yeah, no, I think you guys have. I think you guys have uh, real, really realistic expectations. Yeah, um, yeah, sounds good. I think you guys will probably do pretty well, especially awesome. like if you stick to it. And yeah, I think knowing where you want to go is the most important part. And like you guys kind yeah. of seem like you know what you want out of it and where you want to go. So yeah, thanks cool. for coming out. See you next time. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Thanks for sticking around. I know this video got a little bit long, but I didn't want to edit it any shorter because I felt the advice that Scott had was just so useful. It was worth sharing all of it. Make sure to go check out his channel. I got the subscribe button up there and let me know below what was your most useful piece of advice.